Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues and distinguished panelists, welcome to the panel um, at the Real Estate Forum here in Rio today. Today, we delve into a topic of great importance, women in real estate in Saudi Arabia. My name is Annika Zawadzki, I'm a managing director and partner at BCG, and I globally lead our climate and sustainability activities in our travel cities and infrastructure PA. Real estate is more than just a sector in the economy. It's a canvas of progress and um, a testament to human innovation and a critical pillar in the development of um, societies around the world. In Saudi Arabia, real estate already has taken center stage in the journey towards economic modernization and diversification under Vision 2030, with estimated one trillion um, giga uh, project commitments until then. KSA cities are evolving very rapidly, not just in the skylines, but in the very fabric of urban life. From the sprawling developments um, of Russian investment opportunities like uh, Riyadh uh, Riyad Raid to the transformative impact of the projects like Sports Boulevard. We see innovation and excellence in every corner of this country. And women are in the very middle of it. If we look at labor market statistics, 60% of female nationals just entered the labor market two years ago. And if we look forward, 60% of unemployed women plan to go into the labor market very soon, in the next two years. Um, and the, this entrepreneurial spirit also ref is reflected in startups because 45% are owned 45% are owned by women. And I'm very, very happy to have you with us today, two female role models of the real estate sector in Saudi, our esteemed panelists, Giovanna Carnevali and Dina Alawat. Giovanna currently works as Executive Director Urban Planning at Russian Group and works, uh, also worked at Neon previously, developing residential communities and shaping high-quality communities. Dina, the CEO of OWN Real Estate, a real estate platform in Saudi, um, did a remarkable job when she played a crucial role in listing Riyadh Raid, the first right listed in Tadabul, the Saudi Stock Exchange. I'm super happy to have you here and that you share your experience you have with the real estate sector in Saudi. Let me start with a warm-up question. To find a, a little bit about, uh, out, uh, about you, what inspired you to pursue a career in real estate and tell us um, about a moment that really changed your life? Shall I, Giovanna. Shall I start? Uh, well, Neke, thank you so much for the introduction and uh, for this panel about women, but it's a little bit awkward and weak, it's strange because uh, I don't want to feel uh, that women are kind of apartheid in that sense uh, in the market, even in the real estate. I think uh, we are an important piece of it, and then we have uh, a, a, a different way of looking at the, at the market and, and, the, and society needs than, than men. We have a different brain structure, and then we see also the problem in a different complexity. So regarding the question of uh, what, uh, what inspires me to be, uh, well, in, in the real estate, I would rather say that uh, I'm an architect as, uh, as a region, as a formation, and uh, one of the most important things in architecture and in the real estate is uh, to improve the better life of people. So we are in one of the most humanitarian uh, profession that we have in the world, together with doctors, because we live in spaces, like now, here, and then we uh, live in homes, we work in offices, uh, we work in a public space of, that we play, that we plan in advance and that we think in advance. So it is extremely humanitarian way of looking at uh, our reality and, uh, and the quality of life of us, our family, and our citizens. So if we are really like an active part of it, definitely, I mean, we can make a big change. That is the reason why I wanted to be. <laughs> thank you. And Dina, you? Yeah, thank you so much for having me here today. I mean, real estate is, is a new industry. I mean, it's, it's an asset class that you can create. And that's exactly why I chose real estate. And uh, for the moment, well, why I chose uh, and, and how it shaped my career, 
I think listing the first street uh, was, was a very important milestone in, in my career. And uh, rarely you, wor you work on something that changes an industry rather in, within the country rather than a personal achievement. And as Riyadh Reed touched every single aspect of real estate, we worked on investments, developments, managing tenants, managing hotel operators. I mean, and all this experience gave us a very strong foundation that when we, even we went internationally and invested in Europe and, and uh, US, uh, we had a like, high quality institutional uh, work that we did in Saudi that allowed us to compete even internationally. And also it gave me confidence to run the, the family office of Al Majal Al Arabi and that's, um, that's, that's why Riyadh Reed is, is different and all assets that I worked on and products were very close to my heart, but maybe this is really what shaped uh, me as Lina. Thank you for sharing um, and those inspiring stories. Coming back to the Riyadh Raid and your work in the um, investment part of real estate, how do you see women evolving in that, part, that specific part of the real estate industry? Yeah. So within uh, real estate itself, I mean, the success is evident. You have now list 19 listed REITs with more than 400 properties, and we are seeing more women working on, on, uh, on these REITs and real estate uh, funds in general. Real estate funds are uh, they're giving developers the, a, a better exit strategy. They're le le leaving developers to build more. And also, you can, part as investors, like mass investors, they can invest in these funds. So uh, it changed a lot, and it gave liquidity to the market. And you know the growth is coming anyways. Uh, Vision 2030, big part of it is real estate. So as a woman, we have to be part of this. I mean, it's, it's such an, like, you feel proud building your own country. So, and that's, that's the, the main thing. When, when I work on something, it's like started from planning, and then when I enter a property or when we open a hotel, it's, it's, a, it's a proud moment that we have, like, we worked on this. I mean, it's... it's it's a long-term investment. Sometimes you would feel, oh, it would take long until I enter. But once you enter, you feel very proud that you added, you were participated and, and been part of this vision. And do you already see a lot of women in that specific part of the real estate industry? I mean, a industry? lot. We can see here. Uh, we, we are seeing more and more every year, and I encourage uh, women to be, I mean, it, every sector, you will fe face challenges, mm -hmm. as, as a woman or as a man. And, and globally, you will see lower women, but we are seeing that uh, changing, and we just need to be, I mean, I don't want to see first movers, We've, it's been, women been working for long, but you have to have uh, a bit thick skin, maybe in real estate, and, uh, and negotiate and be, I don't want to see aggressive, but you, have, you just need to be, um, to have thick skin, and, and I think all of us can do it, if, if globally they can do it, I'm sure in Saudi we can do it as well. It's very inspiring if you want to contribute um, to shaping your country. Coming to you, Giovanna, you have to deliver quite a few mega and giga projects um, uh, until 2030 and beyond. Uh, how do you manage to get all the people on board from different um, yeah, backgrounds and with different history? Well, it, it is not easy, uh, definitely. It is true that now Saudi Arabia, and I fully agree with you, Dina, is uh, changing significantly. And then I would even say that is uh, the center of the universe, probably, because everybody wants to be part of this big change. And I, I mean, I'm super proud of this country, in which I partly uh, feel uh, part of it. Uh, and uh, so it's really through curriculum and then through the selection has to be based on, on the capacity and the skills and the expertise that is needed at, at the different stages. Imagine, uh, Anika, that we need to deliver by 2030, I mean, Roshin has to deliver 400,000 uh, uh, houses, and out of which we would like that 70% would be owner of, of these houses. Imagine that we have a land bank of 200 million square meters. So I'm a European, I've been living for many years in Barcelona, and then Barcelona has a 40 million square meters of land bank. And we need to build across, Roshin has to build across all KSA, 200 million land bank of, so density is different, but look at the proportion. Look at the scale of the project that we need to develop here. So we need expertise at all levels, uh, real estate, engineering, architecture, uh, and development, any, any kind of, uh, I mean, uh, expertise. 
And uh, well, talking about women, I would say that uh, uh, fun, fun fact, 90% of my team, which is 46 people, is based on women. <laughs> so, and then it's been like, it's, it, it's a casualty, but this is the way it is, this is the reality. And uh, they are really strong workers. Um, it, they, they know how to deal with family and, uh, and work. They, need, they know how to balance probably more than us in Europe. But you're from Germany, but still, I mean, from, from Italy probably it's different. Um, but it's, it's, very, it's very interesting to see the eagerness that uh, women have in order to be part of the market actively. And I think the change happened from the moment in which King Salman became the king uh, in 2015. And, uh, and now the, the change uh, is uh, exponentially. Yeah, you said you're in Saudi um, since five years. I mean, how do you describe that? The change? The change. Uh, yeah, you need to leave. I don't know how many of you uh, expats uh, are here in the room and then how many uh, of which uh, uh, are here since more than five years or more than two. So it's, it's a mass, massively. Mm. So it's, um, you have... Uh, yeah, you can hear uh, songs in the, in the restaurant. You have concerts around. You can wear any kind of dress uh, you want. You're not obliged, probably, you know, to, to wear a baya for expats. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, open, really open-minded. And then I think, and I, I want to, I'm happy to say that uh, to all of us, and all of you, and all of us here, that uh, being European, I see much more discrimination being women in Europe than here. I wouldn't be in the same position I am here, so in, in Saudi, uh, in, so in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Definitely by far not. So that says a lot. I have to say, I, was, I came to Saudi the first time in September or October, and here I am back again because I got really inspired during the days I was here. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, it's all about quality of life. That's what we hear in different discussions during the day, enhancing um, the quality of life um, of all the people of Saudi Arabia. Dina, to you. How are current real estate developments contributing to the Vision 2030's goal of improving the quality of life of every citizen and KSA? Also, of course, from a female perspective. Yeah. I mean, uh, we are seeing uh, very nice new projects. I mean, lifestyle projects, public and private sector, sectors worked on, um, on an amazing project that changed the quality of life. I mean, also, when you look at the Mega and Giga projects, the first phases are opening. Uh, you looked at uh, Bijeri within Dir'iyah, you look at St. Regis in Red Sea, also Al Ula. Uh, also, with, when you look at the private sector, um, you have very nice new lifestyle projects that. Uh, increase the quality of life. I mean, sometimes you really can't keep up. When I have my friends coming over from uh, all around the world, it's I, like I'm a tourist. I have to take them everywhere, and I don't want to miss a place because it's, it's just all amazing. When you go to Dir'iyah, they see the new and old Saudi, and then when you go to Kaf, you see the new Saudi. So it's, it's something that you really want to show them everything. And, uh, to be, to be, um, and when you look also at statistics, the local tourism, it's increased significantly, and giving the, the stressful job that we have in real estate, sometimes you want to travel every two months just for a getaway. Now, like next month, I'm, I'm going to Al-Uda. So the local, lo local tourism within Saudi increased significantly, and we want to go and explore other cities uh, as well. So, um, but real estate in nature is long term, so it will take time. However, we are already seeing that and feeling that, and I'm sure by 2030 or maybe even um, earlier, as a lot of uh, pillars been achieved uh, even uh, earlier. So we are seeing that, and I'm sure we're going to see even more uh, improving in quality of life as well. Thanks for sharing. I see a lot of aspiration to enhance the quality of life for, for everyone in different aspects of life. You, um, Giovanna, have been working with NEOM, a very special project um, also here. Um, what, impacts, um, or what impacts do those projects have when it comes to improving quality of life and bringing communities together? Yeah, it's a very good question, and thanks for, for asking it. Because sometimes uh, people think, uh, and they ask me, you, know, you have been for four years in Neom, you have been at the head of uh, urban planning there when you developed the line, the concept of the line, and how, is, uh, how can you... 
uh, with that brain and mindset to work in a real estate company, developing communities. It's uh, like, uh, so we're coming from, let's say, a line which uh, 170 kilometers length and 500 meters high with hyper density to communities in which we have, uh, uh, well, 1.5 FRR, so meaning that we have uh, ground floor plus one or maybe two normally, like a single family or multifamily housing. Well, the principles are the same. That's the point. So it's uh, really thanks for that question because improving quality of life, it means basically what we try to experience everywhere in Europe and, and possibly here when uh, we are talking about the old Riyadh and new Riyadh. Riyadh is an extremely dispersed city. And what we try to do also within our community is to enhance the, uh, the proximity uh, level. So we want to try to enhance also the mixed use uh, way of living in which uh, we live, we work, we play in the same place. So we don't need to commute so much with a car because traffic is insane. We need to find also alternative way of a transport system and uh, it, it sounds banal what I'm saying, but are the main fundamental principles to, to ensure a quality of life that they can be applied in the line, but also in a community. So, and for everyone, for, I mean, people every day, for us, and uh, for young people, for elderly, for families, uh, for students. And, uh, and also, we want to also guarantee that we have a public space that work. And in Saudi, we have a big challenge. So we have challenge from March until October, that uh, is the climate, mm -hmm. but the challenge can be an opportunity to create something different, a new identity that is uh, from Saudi, for Saudi, and probably uh, from Saudi to the world we love. Yeah, thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, as you said, com community is a, a mix of, of everyone, so it's old and young men and women, children, um, experts and Saudi nationals, um, and it's important to have um, those people in the team if you think about um, yeah, new projects and you want to implement projects. So I want to circle back to women in the labor market, in, in the workforce. Giovanna, how do you perceive um, the evolution of women roles in the real estate sector over the past five years you've been in Saudi? Well, the, as I said, uh, that 90% uh, of my team is based on women. Uh, and I have to say that, for example, just to provide some numbers, in Roshin, we are 1,260 mm, 1, people, out of which 30% are women. And then at the executive level, we are 17%, and then at uh, C-suite, uh, we are 10%. It's not so much, though. I, I, we, we would like to, to arrive by 2030 with 50% uh, at least of, uh, of this balance. Uh, within Roshi, you know, even more. And uh, the, as I said, the, the evolution has been exponential because I see in my team, uh, I, I look like I am the, glam, the grandmother or probably the grand-grandmother of a uh, younger generation that is uh, now, uh, well, learning a lot from us probably and then taking the lead, which is your country, and then you need to be proud of it. But they have between 25, 35 years old, uh, yeah, mother of kids, uh, two, three kids, uh, and then they keep going in the house and doing the, their job, and plus, they stay very late at night and work even the weekends. More than men, I have to say, than talking about discrimination, but it's, it's the reality, so at least in my team in, in urban planning. So I think uh, it's a sign of a change, and then uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, hopefully it's going to keep changing in that way. Let me ask one small follow-up question. Did something change in the team the more women came into your team? The, the culture, the team culture? <clears throat> yeah, how many men do we have in the team? <laughs> no, um, <laughs> just to understand. Look, I think uh, women try to create a different dialogue and they try to create a more consensus than men. Doesn't mean that uh, we are not able to take decisions. Probably, I mean, we already have the decision taken, but we want to create a consensus and make sure that everybody follow the same, the same path. So it's less testosterone in that sense. Mm -hmm. So it creates more balance, uh, especially in a, in a, in a uh, I mean, environment that is very testosterone driven, many men driven. So I think uh, this balance is needed. Thanks, Tina. 
What do you find most appealing about the real estate sector? Why should jo women join? Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's a nice sector. And I mean, at the end, we are building for both women and men, and, and maybe more for women. I mean, when you build residential, women use the house more than men, maybe, you know? So you have to be part of planning and, and building that because the, the end user is mass, both women and men. And uh, when you look at the aspects of real estate, uh, you, would, you would want to be part of tourism, lifestyle projects, and, and it's very important to have both um, uh, women and men because the, 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 sh the diversity and sharing ideas between both uh, genders are very important, and that's how we have, we've been created in this, um, this uh, world. And, and, and what would you tell women why they should join me, for example, because I get really inspired by what you tell me about uh, real estate in Saudi Arabia? I mean, uh, things are changing. I mean, uh, the struggles that we faced mm -hmm. globally, I mean, women in real estate globally, mm -hmm. uh, you have a lower percentage than men, but it's, it's, uh, it's getting uh, bigger and bigger every year, and especially in Saudi, uh, the struggles and obstacles we used to face 10 years ago, I mean, you rarely uh, face it now. And even if you face it, when things are easy, it's not something that you feel you want to do it. I mean, I like challenges, and, and that's how you, you, you progress in your career. Without challenges, it's just a day-to-day -day operation. And, and again, the struggles that we used to face, for me, is day-to-day -day now. I mean, I, I would laugh and move on, you know? And the more success you see, the, the more you're hungry to do more um, to that. So I really encourage everyone, like men and women, and especially women, to to have this feeling, the, one, the love that I have for my work and how I'm participating and to build uh, this country. So it's very important to be part, part of this. Thank you. It's really about building the country. I like, I like this uh, wording. Giovanna, what strategies have you employed to ensure diversity and inclusion in your um, real estate projects and teams? Like corporate strategies, I mean, being in Neom or being in uh, yet at Roshin, what do you do to really get women on board and then help them to progress? Uh, frankly speaking, and probably I'm, I'm bad in that sense, I never applied any specific strategy to hire more women than men. I, I mean, I'm frankly and honest, uh, probably uh, in that case, uh, I'm not following the, the rules as, as, as a woman, probably I need to. Um, I think uh, the, it's about curriculum. So uh, uh, the, the experience and also when you talk uh, to the people and you make the interview, you see in their eyes immediately, no matter whether it's a man or a woman, then suddenly when you make the list of the people, you say, oh, look how many women there are. And that's his, uh, that's his neom was, and then also uh, here in the real estate in Roshin. Type of women in neom are the groundbreaking people. They really, they want to crash and then change uh, really the way we live very radically, uh, and in Roshin are more the, the way of changing fundamentally from, from the roots uh, of uh, our society and community. So there are two types probably of, of women in that sense, but all of them, their motivation is amazing. It's, uh, yeah, I, I would say really like uh, based on, on CVs and, uh, and the motivation, because sometimes CV says a lot, but then when you talk with someone, you might have the best CVs in the world, but you need to hear the voice and look in the eyes of a one, someone and then understanding the spirit of, uh, yeah. And then it's all about getting the best people on board, which obviously also can be a woman. Yeah. What I have to say, though, that, uh, as I said, the C-suite and the ED level in uh, Roshin, for example, but also was Neom the same, is very, is very low. So we have 17, 10%, meaning that uh, probably, uh, it's probably more difficult for a woman to arrive uh, and to touch a certain threshold than men. I don't know whether this is a discrimination or not, but number says everything, mm -hmm. right? Sa? Yeah, and I think that uh, also because women, they, they, they just started maybe five, six years ago. So within the experience of a Saudi female as well in Saudi, I think within the next five years, you, will, you might see more 
on the sea level and uh, within the experience. And, and that's why I encourage all companies and, and also um, the public sector to hire more when it comes to uh, the C-suite because that's very important. And, and to, to, have the, 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 to have it from top to down, that will be something very important for women as well. Dina, you entered the real estate market in 2015, eight years ago, no, almost nine years ago. Um, what advice would you give young women, university students, young Annika, um, for entering the real estate market? Uh, you just need to, uh, to have, I mean, personally, when I first attended the meetings in real estate more than 10 years ago, I was a bit, did, I said to myself, is this for me? I mean, the, the, the aggressiveness in negotiation, that's borderline fighting. I said, do I want to do this? But uh, it's, it's a nice feeling when, when you negotiate. Real estate as, as a sector, when it comes to construction and development, it's a bit tough. And you, you, you would need the, the, this thick skin. And I don't want to say aggressiveness, but it's something that maybe women wouldn't want to you do it. You can say that. Sorry? You can say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, so I just i am encouraging women, be yourself, be aggressive. If they say you're aggressive, that's fine. As, as long as you get things done. Once you get things done, people, people would look at your, your achievement. I mean, yeah. I've, we, maybe we are scared more than with the market. I mean, the market there, we received calls from public and private sectors. They want to hire women, and they, they're looking for that. We are just like, scared to be there, and, and I think we should remove that. Uh, they, the, the most important is your experience and education. Once, and to be honest, with the vision, all they care about is the outcome. If it's men or women, they want to see the project being built, you know? Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't look at you as a woman or a man. So I, I really encourage, and whatever feeling I have, I, I mean, maybe I'm inspiring already people, but I really want you to feel the, the, how proud I am when, when I go and enter uh, buildings that I, I worked on or, or the team that um, what left my company or other, other, my team members that left to other companies and succeeded as women. So hopefully we can see more women next year here <laughs> in, in the panel as well. Looking forward that, on that. Dina um, and Giovanna, thank you so much for sharing your personal stories, your, your look um, at, at the real estate market in Saudi and of course your personal outlook on women in the workforce. I have to say our joint preparation already inspired me very, very much. Um, this panel, uh, I have to say even more, I, I really um, start to love the real estate sector in, in Saudi Arabia. Um, I think uh, the insights you shared um, not only highlight the pivotal role of women in the real estate sector, but in shaping the future of this country, and it underscores the opportunities they have and, and the advancement that sector offers. And I can only say to the women in our audience and beyond, the real estate sec sector in Saudi seems not to only invite you to, to participate, to, but to really bring in your leadership, your creativity and vision. The sector seems seems to be a canvas where you can paint your path and the path of the future um, of Saudi Arabia. So thank you for sharing your perspectives on that. I would, was delighted to be with you on this panel. Thank you. Thank you so much.